I'm digital artist Aaron Rutten, and today I'll show you how to improve your workflow by taking advantage of multiple displays. I'll explain some of the benefits of working with more than one display, and then I'll show you exactly how to set up your displays and configure them correctly. A display is most often a monitor, but it can also be a drawing tablet like this Cintiq, or even a touchscreen like the Stream Deck. Depending on your computer, you may be able to use more than one display at once. Each display is capable of displaying its own unique content. First, let's talk about the advantages to working with two or more displays. Unless you are doing a simple task like browsing the web, working on a single display is frustrating and inefficient. Any tasks that involve multiple applications will require you to juggle the applications or try to show them all at once. If you're an artist like me, then you'll know how hard it is to get a decent view of your canvas once you place some palettes and reference images on the display. Once you've tried working on multiple displays, you'll never want to go back to a single monitor. Let me highlight some of the reasons why. Everyone can benefit from having more than one display because it allows you to use 100% of your main display for one task and your second display for anything else that might need to be open. If you are multitasking, each application can have its own display. For artists, it allows you to have a dedicated display for reference images a music player, or any other sort of resource. This means you can maximize how much of your canvas you can show on your primary display. In order to use multiple displays, there are a few requirements. First, your video card or GPU must support multiple monitors simultaneously. My card is an NVIDIA GTX 1080. A good indicator that your GPU can support multiple monitors is to look at how many outputs it has. I can only use four of the five outputs at once, one DVI, one HDMI, and three DisplayPort outputs. But some GPUs may support more than that. If your display requires a different connection type, there are adapters you can purchase to convert the video signal. For example, I have converted the DVI port into HDMI. And of course, you'll need more than one display. It's worth mentioning that some computers come with both onboard video and a separate dedicated GPU. As you can see, I have another video output on this system. To use your multiple displays with the best performance, you'll want to choose the correct GPU. In my case, anytime I see options for display or GPU, I'll be sure to select my NVIDIA GPU. When selecting a GPU for your computer, consider the display input requirements for your devices. For example, my Cintiq 27 QHD has to be connected to one of the display port outputs to utilize full QHD resolution. I can connect my HDTV through HDMI, and my monitor is connected to DisplayPort. Should I ever need to connect an additional display, I can connect it through the remaining DisplayPort output or the HDMI adapter. Some newer monitors and display tablets can also utilize USB-C or Thunderbolt to connect to a computer. For example, the Wacom Cintiq Pro 24 and 32 and the Mobile Studio Pro 16 second generation can utilize USB-C or Thunderbolt to transmit both data and video to your computer. This makes for fewer cables on your desk, but can come at the cost of throttling the USB 3.0 ports on your hub to 2.0 speeds. Newer computers will likely have a USB-C or Thunderbolt port, but just be sure the connection supports video if you plan to use it for a display. Now let's take a look at the various displays I have connected to my computer. First is the Wacom Cintiq 27 QHD Touch. This is my primary display, which I use for anything that I want to focus on. Because it has the most accurate color, the highest resolution, and supports pen and touch input, this is the display I use for art and design tasks. Next is a Samsung 50-inch HDTV that supports a 1080p resolution. It's humongous, I know, but this amount of desktop space is incredibly useful for storing large amounts of icons, folders, files, reference images, windows, and multiple applications. HDTVs are not much different from a computer monitor, and you might even have an old one laying around that you can repurpose. My third display is a more reasonably sized ASUS 24-inch 1080p monitor. I use this to store whatever overflow spills over from the secondary display. Because I'm using a standing desk and a Cintiq, which can sometimes block the view of the other displays, it's nice to have options for where I can place additional content. Although it's not what first comes to mind when you think of a display, my fourth display is a Stream Deck. This is a small touchscreen monitor with transparent physical buttons. This can be used to launch applications, commands, and more. You can even create multiple pages of buttons, folders of buttons, and even buttons that perform multiple commands. 
This creates fewer interruptions in my workflow and frees up more of my displays. For example, I can launch an application or open folders from the Stream Deck rather than minimizing an application on one of my primary displays so I can navigate my computer. While we're on the topic of touch screens, if one of your additional displays supports touch, you may be able to take advantage of that by placing the palettes from your art application on the touch screen. Otherwise, I recommend keeping any frequently used palettes on your primary display, since you'd have to use your mouse or display toggle to access anything on the additional displays. I know four displays seems like a lot, but I do use all four of them on a daily basis, and it's really done wonders for my workflow and efficiency. Now that you have a good idea of how to connect multiple displays, let's take a look at how to configure your computer correctly. First, locate your display settings. On Windows 10, I just need to right-click on the desktop to find it. Next, select your primary display. If you need help identifying the displays, use the button. Your primary display is the display where you want applications and important content to appear. Artists who are using a display tablet will want to choose the display tablet as their primary display. Scroll down until you find multiple displays. If it is not already selected, choose Make This My Primary Display. Scroll back up and select one of your additional displays. Then back down to the bottom and choose Extend Desktop to this display. Now each display will show its own unique content. Duplicate will mirror the same content on all displays. Back up at the top, the positions of the icons should match the locations of the displays in relation to each other on your desk. Try to match it visually, and then try moving between displays with your mouse. There is some dead space between devices where the mouse cursor will be obstructed, so you may need to adjust the position a bit to get the cursor to flow naturally between displays. Next, you may want to set a custom UI scale for each display, if the text and graphics are too small or too large. To maximize your displays, keep the scaling set to a lower value if possible. You can change it at any time, so feel free to experiment until you find what suits you best. If you're having any issues with the image displaying correctly on your displays, check your GPU control panel. I can do that by right-clicking on my desktop. Look for options to adjust your display. This can be particularly useful when your HDTV is cropping off some of the desktop. You can also rotate the image if you plan to use one of the displays in a vertical orientation. Back on the desktop, you may want to move your taskbar. Be sure it's unlocked and then just drag it to the desired display. I like mine to be at the top of my HDTV. Load some of your applications and ensure they are appearing on your primary display. You can move applications between displays by putting them into window mode and dragging them with your mouse. If you're using a drawing tablet, your pin input may be locked to a single display. In order to move between multiple displays will require some additional effort, so it's best to have a mouse handy to access the additional displays. In order to use your pin input to control the cursor on your other displays, you'll need to configure the Wacom tablet properties. Look under Tool, Functions, Display Toggle. Here I can choose what I want to happen when I use the Display Toggle button. The first option will allow the pen to work on all displays at once. The second mode will make the pen input jump from one display to the next. I prefer the second mode. Next, you will need to choose an Express Key, Pen Button, or On-Screen Key to invoke Display Toggle. I'll add it to my Express Key remote. The command can be found under the tablet menu. Now when I press this button, my pen input can control what's on the other displays. Personally, I find it easier to use the mouse, so I don't use display toggle. If you're using a tablet without a display, your pen input might be bound to the wrong display. In order to change this, you'll want to select your device in the Wacom tablet properties, and then under Tool, choose your pen. In the Mapping tab, under Screen Area, choose your desired display. You can choose full, which will make the pen active on all displays at once, but that is not recommended because it will severely impact the accuracy of your pen for drawing. Now that you are set up with multiple displays, I'd like to wrap up this video by demonstrating how I use my displays. When I'm making art, I place my reference images on an additional display. I can also place a navigator palette on one of the displays to show an alternate view of my composition. I also use the additional displays for spreading out windows and applications when I am multitasking. As I mentioned earlier, you can spread out palettes and UI onto the other displays, but that requires an extra step of using display toggle or using your mouse. One of the most useful ways I use these displays is to copy and paste from one document or application to another. If you're doing any sort of web conferencing, 
it's nice to have your video feed and screen share on their own displays, while keeping a display free for your notes or whatever you need to follow along. Multiple displays are essential for anyone who is live streaming. Otherwise, your live streaming software covers what you are streaming, and you have to juggle applications. Even if you're just recording your art, it's really helpful to have a dedicated display just for your recording software. And last but not least, multiple displays can be useful for proofing your artwork. Chances are your displays may not show color accurately, and they all show color differently. That's actually a good thing because it means you'll have a good idea of how your artwork will look on a range of devices. I didn't cover absolutely everything you can do with multiple displays, but I'll let you explore that on your own. If you found this video valuable, please like, subscribe, and become a member of this channel to get additional resources for digital artists. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.